This is Dan Ferraro. It's a new day in Utopia, and you're listening to Bring Me Your Torch with Patriot Jesse, Polyamorous Elaine, and not Beekeeper Jake. Welcome to another episode of Bring Me Your Torch. I'm Jesse. And I'm Elaine. And uh, I had a good Thanksgiving. How was yours? Yeah, it was pretty quiet and uneventful. How was yours? What'd you do? The usual. I saw my parents, ate some turkey, hung out with Natalie and Nadia from Survivor and the Amazing Race. Oh my God. Nothing much. I know. I saw that <laughs> photo and I'm so jealous. So I'm out at a bar with my brother and some cousins in Connecticut, where I'm from, and I'm looking at these two twins because there's a high school reunion going on that night. And I'm like, am I crazy? Is that Natalie and Nadia from Survivor and the Amazing Race? And only one other person knows what I'm talking about. And they said, yeah, you know, could be. Who knows? And I showed up my brother a picture. I go, is, is that them? <laughs> and he looks at the picture, looks at the two girls, goes, no, their faces are totally different. <laughs> it's not them. And I'm like, oh, OK, I must just be crazy. <laughs> and then Natalie came closer to me and I saw a nose ring. And I'm like, they have nose rings. I know this is I know this is yeah. them. So I Googled the town we were in and their names. And sure enough. I saw an interview they gave where they went to high school there. I'm like, oh my. So now at this point, my heart is beating like a, like a moron. Oh like my, my gosh. My cousins are like, calm down. It's just a reality TV star. I'm like, no, no, you don't understand. Like the chances of this happening, what we do you know, with this podcast, and I'm here in this bar with these folks. So I'm waiting for an opening because you don't want to bug them. They're there to see people they haven't seen in forever. Yeah. You know? So I, I wait for an opening, and I kind of buzz over there. And I go, hey, am I crazy? are you two on The Amazing Race and on Survivor? And they're like, yep, it's us. And I was like, oh my God, I have a reality TV podcast. They thought it was great. And I got a picture taken with them. And I told them I was, uh, they were both on my reality TV fantasy league. And Natalie points to Nadia and goes, yeah, well, she totally failed you. And I kind of gave her like the, the hand, like, oh yeah, thanks for nothing. Ha ha ha, just what, joking around. she was kicked off, really? She, she was kicked off first. Aww. Yeah, They were around us the entire night, but I didn't want to bug them. You don't want to be a creeper. Were they hovering? But I take, they were hovering around me, I think, uh. maybe. I mean, who knows? They were actually stunning in person. I mean, they're both very beautiful. I was like, wow. They're probably wondering, is this guy still looking at us? Because before I went over there, I saw him looking my way, and I'm like, oh, maybe, maybe they like me. And then I'm like, <laughs> they're probably wondering, why is this guy staring at us? <laughs> you know what they were thinking. But... I just wouldn't shut up about it for the rest of the night, and I tweeted it out, and I woke up the next morning, and Natalie had found it and had responded, ha, 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 to the podcast and gave the kind of okay signal. That's awesome. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reach out to them and see if I can get them on the pod. That because, would be you know, awesome. And you, you, they, wait, wait, you said that nobody was recognizing them and coming up to them? No. I mean, to the people in the high school, they're probably just Natalie and Nadia, you know, the people you knew and went to high school with. But nobody else were recognizing them, at least that I saw. Wait, wait. How are you in the middle of their reunion? They were just having it at a bar. Oh. You know, so the, and there was like a wedding reception, I think, going on at the same time. It was pretty crazy. So they were just a giant group of people standing together, and we happened to have a table pretty much next to where they were, where they were hovering the, most of the night. I couldn't believe it. Like, only me. Did they come, and, come back and talk to you at all? No, no, no. They didn't come back at all. You know, to be fair, they're out there having a good time. If I was at my high school reunion, I wouldn't want people bugging me either. I think I did it in a pretty nice and respectful way. And they seemed like really cool chicks. I probably could have bugged them a little more, but didn't want to push it. Yeah. Did you get any hints as to who won the show? No, I, I didn't even bug them. If I had seen them out normally at a bar, I may have talked to them a little more. But also, you know, I don't want to be that fanboy. They're two cute ladies. I, I want to be like, hey, I'm a normal guy. Come talk to me. <laughs> well, you're not. You're the host of Bring Me Your Torch. You're a total huge celebrity. Duh. Yeah, well, obviously. So phenomenal way to end my vacation. I'm just wondering if way- who was the one that is still on Survivor as of right now? Natalie. I'm wondering if Natalie actually got to the top three. I'm not kissing butt, by the way, either. I was a big fan of theirs on The Amazing Race the first time they were on, and they got kicked off the first team uh, the second time they're on. But I like them. They have kind of the twin thing going where they're, they're always fighting with each other, but only the way that like a, a brother and a sister or a sister and a sister or a brother, brother can. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. I always liked them. We're going to have to so. go back and erase some of my previous comments in our podcast because I think I was talking a little bit of trash about them, but we love you. <laughs> Your comments, not mine. <laughs> I love Taking that and just going right into Survivor. We're a little late on this, but you know the holiday was there. We're, we're running down some shows that are about a week old or so. Uh, this week started now with John being in control, or at least thinking he was in control of the game. And uh, what, what do we call John? John, John, not the rocket scientist. John, John not the brain not the rocket scientist. I think he screwed himself because no one can trust him. If, as we mentioned before, you can't keep flip-flopping back and forth. You're just going to cause more and more trouble. I totally agree. But to be honest, I kind of forgot what happens. It's been so long. <laughs> <laughs> well, he turned on Josh and then turned around and turned on your boy Jeremy the next week. This is tough for me because 
I'm a Natalie and a Baylor fan. And John really was trying to say, you know, we're good. I got rid of Jeremy, but we're still good. So I wanted to get rid of John, but he was basically still an ally with the people that I like. So I didn't know which way to go with it. Well, I think Reed's the biggest idiot in this. He was He's, trying to blindside John. Like so many people who play this game, there are delusions of grandeur, and he thought he was smart. And comparatively with the people that he was uh, associating with, he probably was really smart. But if you're going to make big moves, you better make sure you make them. I'm confused. Didn't they know that John had the idol, though? Why would you do that knowing that he has the idol? The whole point is he's not going to play the idol if he thinks he's safe. Right. So if everybody thinks the, the plan this week was Just be like nonchalant that, about it. Yeah, that Reed got Alec, Keith, and Wes together and said, we're going to tell everybody that we're voting for Keith and Wes because everybody knows for a fact that Keith has an idol. And while everybody splits the votes there, then they vote for John when he's least expecting it. He won't use the idol and you get rid of him. That didn't work out. You well should have him. asked Natalie how she's became such a good sociologist, psychologist, because she picked up on the fact that they were plotting against John and she went and tipped John off. You should have asked her that when you saw her. In comic book terms, I believe that you said her spider sense was tingling. She kind of got just a little, a little vibe. It was a vibe of how things were going because Keith made the weird comments. Keith said something like, oh, just stick to the plan. That got everybody plan. freaking out. That. That's when Natalie was just like, you know what? Use it. And John was like, should I? Dum -da -dum -da -dum. And she's like, do, it, do what you want. I think you should use it. But does I mean, that mean Natalie's really aligned with John? The way she and Baylor were talking, they want to get rid. They wanted to get rid of Reed this week, and then John next week. They wanted to make sure they had a little couple more numbers before they started going after their own. So I think, which is perfect, because John's used the idol now, so they can get him next week, right? Well, Natalie, with a little help from Baylor, found the immunity idol, and now she is the only one with immunity idol because the other two burned theirs. She's sitting pretty. Can Natalie claim that, or was that Baylor's? No, Natalie claimed it. It was Natalie's. I don't know if she did it on purpose or not, but it was a genius move. Basically got everybody else to blow each other up, and she's sitting there <laughs> she's getting picking through the rubble. It ends with John getting the votes and Wes getting kicked off because Keith has the uh, idol. And Keith, you know, good job, Keith, being a good father. He offered the idol to his son, but his son, I think, you know, did a stand-up move and said, no, you found it, you keep it. So now, when everything is all said and done, John knows that Reed tried to get rid of him. Yeah. Reed is still there, yeah. but he's basically screwed. They don't have the numbers. So if I was Natalie and Baylor and those folks, again, I would just sit back and let John and Reed and Alec and all those people try to destroy each other even oh, further. Yeah. And, but I have a question because the scenes from the next episode says that there's a tie and there has to be like some sort of t the tiebreaker, the second in Survivor history. But if everyone hates Reed because he tried to blindside John, why is there a tie? Clearly, everyone there's a consensus they need to get Reed out. I think it's a combination of just having too much time in your hands and trying to be smarter than everybody else. Sometimes what's right in front of you, I think, is by far the best course of action and the easiest plan, best plan to take. Yeah. But everybody wants to you know, make a game-changing move. Sometimes you got to ride the current in the right direction. John out a game-changing move. Yeah, but not if you do it too soon and suddenly someone flips and then you're in the minority. Eh, so yeah. we're going to revisit that in a couple of days. I've been pulling for Baylor and Natalie the entire game, and I'm going to keep pulling for them, especially now that Natalie is, I repeat, a friend of the podcast. Oh, yeah. Whether she knows it or not. <laughs> I kind of we'll like them. I could be like friends with them. They're kind of people, they're down to earth. They're really just opinionated, and I love that. They seem very, very chill. Yeah. I'll put it that way. They were, they were pretty cool. So did you watch the uh, mid-season finale of The Walking Dead last night? Oh, no, I totally missed it. Ugh. Uh -huh. No, yeah. If you saw yeah, her, she's course. making a face. <laughs> yes. Yeah, of course we saw um, her. So goodbye to my girl, Beth. Uh, number two on the Jesse Crush power rankings, gone. You know, it annoys me. The Talking Dead totally kills it for me because they kind of tell you that somebody's going to be killed off. We I mean, knew something big was going to happen in the in these mid-season finales. No, they had the commercial, and they say, we have so-and-so, we have so-and-so, and then we have a special guest from the cast who's off in another room. We knew that somebody's going to big that's going to get killed off. That's why they're not showing it. And I just wish they'd stop doing that. It could have been Dawn, for all we knew. At least Beth went out with a giant F you to, to Dawn. Yeah, but she didn't, She when she stabbed her, she didn't. Like kill her. Why didn't you stab her in the neck? That's why I don't. Yeah, yeah don't get you should stab her like on the shoulder. You're not gonna kill anybody by stabbing her on the shoulder. Yeah, it it was the whole thing was kind of weird, but it's it's kind of like Icarus flying too close to the sun. And Dawn went one step too far. If she had just let Noah go, 
everybody would still be alive, but she had to try to be a tough guy one more time to show her dominance, and she got a bullet to the head in that one. Yeah, it's sad, though. It really is. Oh, my favorite scene from this episode is probably one of the greatest okay. scenes ever written ever on television. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Can you what? guess which one it is? Um, no, I can't actually. Oh, it's when Rick walks up to the police cars and Daryl and was it Sasha? Yeah, Daryl and Sasha have the snipers on the cops and the zombie comes out and they're like, where are your guys? And the zombie goes down. The camera pulls up the Rick's face and is like, they're close. And he's like all out of it. <laughs> like, it's just so genius. Well, the funny thing about this episode was in every other sh show you ever see where someone gets hit by a car, they go flying backwards over the car. And this one, it just, he went flying forwards. And, you know, that's probably what would have happened in real life. I was going to say, that's probably the real depiction. I've hit a couple of people before. <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> you know, what happened with that cop has happened a lot this season. It happened with, with Gareth and the cannibals, too. It takes a plot you think is going to be a big, long plot for at least the episode, and then just ends it immediately. You thought Gareth was going to be the big baddie for the entire season? Yeah. Done in episode three. You thought this guy was going to be a thing for the whole episode? Done in the first, <laughs> done before the opening. Gareth credits, was you know? a hipster, though. You can't, you're not, no one's afraid of a hipster unless he's, well, he was eating people's legs. Maybe a hungry hipster. <laughs> a hungry hipster. <laughs> so, so overall, what do you think of the first half of this season? Uh, I thought it was good. I don't really like the fact that they're making us wait till February because by then I'm just not interested anymore. Well, you would be looking for something new to watch around then. People, a lot of people have been complaining about these big waits. Yeah. But I think people forget back in the day, you'd have the entire season, but there'd be like two episodes on, two weeks, two weeks of repeats over and over and over again. I'd rather have the chunks where you get a nonstop every week, even if there's a chunk in the middle. Well, missing. Why are they waiting so long? Because I think they want it to be going on during sweeps, probably. Why don't we call the head of AMC and check? <laughs> I have no one idea. Of the, one of the things I found interesting about this first half of the season, there's no, there's no ongoing thread really till till the second half of the season. Like in the past, there's been the whole thing with the governor where it ends and you, know, you have to take them on the next season. This all all the plots have kind of been taken care of and finished for this. They've half come of the to season. a head and now they have to start something new. Do you think they'll yeah. still go up to DC? I hope that well, the way the show ended, I think they're going to, did you watch after the credits? Did you, did you miss it? Yeah. What was that about? Well, Morgan, who was in the first episode and then in another episode, a couple seasons ago, uh, has been tracking them the entire season. You last saw him, I think at the end of the first episode after the credits. So he found the map that went to DC and he saw Rick Grimes name on it. And he knew he knows who Rick Grimes is. So I think he's going to go to DC. And yeah. I, they, I hope they all do because I want to see get out of Georgia in DC. That would just be awesome. Well, in the comic book, actually, they're in Alexandria and they've been there for quite some time. There was even a Alexandria, a of, Virginia. Yeah, there was even a glimpse of Chopped in DC when they were there. I was like, yes, it's a great salad place, by the way. Anybody? You like look over and it's like the National <laughs> Harbor <laughs> and the Ferris wheel. <laughs> Here's the thing I realized for this episode. So Maggie was super, super excited to find out Beth was alive and super, super sad when she was dead. How come she didn't feel sad the entire rest of the season? I know. I know. You never <laughs> see her weird. show emotion about her sister. And all of a sudden she's like, oh, she's dead. Well, you hadn't seen her for a really long time. Like, yeah, she was uh, worrying about banging Glenn or something. Then yeah, it seemed like that. she cared about finding Glenn more than finding Maggie or finding Beth. We say goodbye to this for a couple more months. We'll catch back up here and watch it with everybody else who's listening to the podcast. I think I needed a break from The Walking Dead anyhow. 90 Day Fiance. I actually just finished watching it. So good. And it was kind of an uneventful episode, but, I, you know, we love the show. and It's still so good. I just, it feeds my, like, I just feel so dirty when I'm watching it. I'm just like, this is such a waste of time, but it's so amazing. But as I start talking about the show, it's amazing how many other people are out there watching it, too. I know. I talk about reality shows. People are like, yeah, I don't watch that. No, I don't watch that. And I mentioned 90 Day Fiance. And they're like, like, well, actually, yeah, yeah. actually, I, I do know, watch that. I know. I love it. So we'll start out talking to uh, talking about our good friends, Jason and Cassia. Uh, so <laughs> they went to the beach and there's all old wrinkly man. But there everybody's like old. Am I crazy? Does that town look like it smells like death and mothballs? I know. They're in Florida, though. So, I mean, like, you can't expect much. <laughs> that town especially, it's it's crazy. So they they go to the beach, and she is not impressed with this beach. And I understand where she's coming from, because I mentioned I used to date a girl from Brazil who lived across from the beach in Recife, and that was like a beach beach. That's a beach where everybody's wearing what, what Cassia was wearing. Yeah. And while that town may have been old and wrinkly, Cassia was anything but. I, I, 
but uh, no pun intended. <laughs> I dug the bathing suit. I thought it was funny, though, when she mentioned no one else is wearing bikinis and Jason goes, this is America. People don't wear bikinis. We wear bikinis. What the hell Jason, is he I think talking you gotta about? Get out more. Yeah. Maybe not in the beaches you go to. Oh, anyways. Hold on, hold, and, hold on. And Jason, speaking about his bachelorette party he, or bachelor party, he wanted to go to Vegas, right? Uh, yeah. And just yeah. like couple that with the wedding. Yeah. So she was saying that his friends hire prostitutes and they call him into like a random room and then the prostitutes go in there. <laughs> and then he. You know, I think it's. We judge people in other countries on certain stereotypes that are probably not true. I think other people judge us on, like, all Americans go to Las Vegas and sleep with prostitutes. I think that's what people think. I, I don't think that she, I don't think she would be perpetuating that stereotype unless she had heard it from him before that his friends used a prostitute. Like, I don't think she's going around like, yeah, I don't want you to be with the prostitutes in Vegas. Well, she. She has mentioned how, how jealous she was in the past. I think, you know, they don't call it Sin City for nothing. So it, she just wants to avoid it altogether. But that doesn't sit well with him. Although, you know, there's a very telling line here when she said, how are we going to marry and have a life together if he doesn't change? And that's the last thing a man wants to hear is like, I have to change. Ouch. But I kind of understand where she's coming from because she made a hell of a big change coming to America. But, yeah, but he's not really doing anything. It's not like he's out every night. I mean, he lives with his dad, who's like a thousand years old. Come on, cut <laughs> the guy some slack. He sells crap on eBay, but <laughs> you, he's not like running around rock. town, you know? Jason, you know, I stay away from the prostitutes. I'm with her on I that. I actually really <laughs> like Jason. He's probably like the most normal person on the show. Yeah, I'm looking well, through the say- names of all the other couples. That's not saying much. <laughs> I'm looking through the names of all the other couples. I'm like, yeah, he's definitely the most normal okay Um, (laughs) i see you just shaking your head jason we love you you know i finally saw something i liked though justin and evelyn when justin's mom met evelyn no what you know what the whole family was pissed that they were going to elope but justin's mom finally had a little positivity going into this she she said that she thought evelyn would be a great addition to the family and that you know she wants to go to this wedding but if she doesn't she'll understand and she's not going to f- flip out like every other member of their family is i really don't like just or yeah justin yeah we well, you told us in the he's past but what do you think he's about his mom total, he's a total d-bag what do you think of his mother his mother is just a victim <laughs> of the rest of the family who've been totally rude to justin the mother was nice. The mother was nice, but that's because she only has so many kids and she wants to be a part of the light. I don't think she has a husband. So I think no, she probably no. feels a little bit bad, like, oh, I need to be a part of this. Well, that's about as far as we got with the whole Justin Evelyn thing. And this I feel week. bad for Evelyn because she's, you know, changed her whole life for this guy, Justin. He's just, I don't like him at all. Danielle Muhammad. <laughs> this one's the best. This one's the saddest, I, I think. I know. In the- it's, you know, they're still broke and started off like, well, you know, at least they're being honest now. And Muhammad's getting behind that. And like, oh, you know, we're just going to get married at the courthouse, get a work visa. But I mean, the most disturbing part of this entire episode is when they kissed and said they loved each other. Like you could see Muhammad was not into this at all. He so he was like a little like, cheek, he gave her his cheek. And yeah. he was like, not even like making a, he was just kind of a blank stare. I'm scared. And like this scares me. You know, I've been rough on Danielle and like made fun of her, but I feel bad for her because you know she just wants to be loved like anybody else. She's and in a I really, really hard position though, because she has how many kids? Four, I think. She's like I three. Know. I always see three, but she might have a. All four. these kids are hanging around. I, I don't know if someone's. Yeah, it's. And then she also has, you know, the house, and I guess she's clearly single. Mojave can't pull in any income, so she's supporting four people herself and a house. The worst situation here, really is the son. He knows what's going on, but doesn't want to break his mom's heart. So he doesn't want to say anything, I'm but sure he basically he flat out say says, anything. this is not going to last. Yeah. You know, he doesn't see it there and we all see it. That I don't know if Muhammad is a bad guy, but he's not in love with Danielle. That's for sure. Oh, really? Yeah. And then at yeah. the end of the thing, she loses her job and he's like so hard on her. He's like, it's your fault. <laughs> he's like, you need to get a new job. Or actually he didn't say that. He was convinced that she'd never be able to find a new job. <laughs> and she's like, well, well I mean, to be fair, to be fair to him, she just finished lying about him and had money problems. And now this happens. Like, I can be homeless in Tunisia. I don't need to move to where the hell they are to be I homeless. Know. And did you hear on. what he said? He's like, the lights aren't on, electricity, no water. I mean, is that a, is he really living in the slums with her? I don't. Get... Here's the deal: when you're picking your uh, American sugar mama, make sure she has some money. <laughs> That's all I gotta say. 
So Danny and Amy are still not living together or banging together. So they're moving up their wedding until two days from now so they can bang all they want Amy, and have God love them. Is Amy <laughs> from South Africa? I'm try- That's not a South African I'm accent I'm trying at to all. do Amy's accent. You're you're failing. It's Am it's I? like it's like it's it's kind of like a <laughs> variation of your Saul. <laughs> um, I'm trying to do I, Amy's accent. Oh, I love Danny. I'm I'm getting a little. That was okay. The I Danny love thing was Danny, okay. and I can't, I'm really like nervous to meet his parents. <laughs> now you're now it's sounding like an old woman, an old man crossed with Lisa Vanderpump. <laughs> He finally met the parents, and the other mom's okay, but boy, is that dad a dick, huh? Oh, God. He's, like, never gone out of Denton, Dallas or something in Texas. We, we've discussed it. Uh, we just don't think we ever have to go to Africa. We got nothing. They got nothing to add for it. And she's like, uh, people think I live in a hut. I live in a city. Yeah, I mean, there's cities everywhere, no matter where you are. And at the end, talking to the camera, the mom's like, oh, you know, we're excited. It's going to be a great addition to the family. And then it cuts to the father, and he's just like, eh. They're going to have hard times. Oh, well, he's a total racist. Let's be serious. Yeah, it's, it's, what, what is this, like 1965? Oh, people aren't accepted of interracial couples. I couldn't like, even maybe believe not, he said like, that. He's, yeah, maybe not where the hell you're from, but in the civilized world, they don't seem to mind. Yeah, I don't think people really care anyhow. Yeah, but it shouldn't matter either yeah. way. F them both. Well, the whatever. thing is, is when the dad asked, how are you going to survive in the world, you know, in this country when people don't accept that? They should have just been like, um, people do accept it. It's just you that doesn't. You don't accept Yeah, it. I don't get it. I'm confused. And how weird was it on the last couple they had on the show today, uh, Brett and Daya? So, you know, the relationship's getting oh, better. God. He wants to have a barbecue and invite his friend Sue. Sue, who is, like, oddly old. <laughs> and he's like, oh, she's like a second mom to me. If I was like, hey, I'm going to introduce you to a friend of mine, and suddenly she was, like, a 70-year-old woman, <laughs> I'd be like, uh, why are you flags, hanging out with a 70 yeah. woman? Yeah. And this woman, Sue, basically, in a passive-aggressive way, said that she was used, She thinks she's using yeah. him. And that she's going to divorce. Yeah. I understand you don't want to accept these people immediately, but you also have to give them kind of a shot. And I, I don't know. It's I don't think it's a mess. Production did a very good job though with showing that Daya and Cassidy really bonded. Because last episode we see Cassidy locking Daya out of the house, and then all of a sudden they're like dropping Cassidy off. With oh, their, things are great now. With their mom <laughs> and like Daya's diarrhea is like laughing or crying, and she's just like, "Oh my god, you know this is the hardest thing I've ever had to do." I'm like, "You hate this kid." Well, you know, maybe they have some sense of the camera on them and that they don't want to look like complete d bags. She was like borderline sobbing. I didn't understand it. Oh, who know? You know, it's maybe they did get attached. Let's give her the benefit of the doubt. I mean, I'd rather not, but okay, it's not. Um, but can we also uh, talk about how naive Brett is? In what way? He just thinks everything's like rainbows and butterflies. Cassidy's my little sunshine, and Daya loves her so much. Come on. I can't, I can't crap on the guy for loving his daughter and being happy the girl that he thinks he's in love with is possibly getting along well. We want to get married in this garden. The guy's just so naive. He acts like an 18-year-old. It's called being in love, Elaine. It's called being in love. So I actually watched Vanderpump a while ago, so I had to do a little uh, reading to remember what the heck happened. I don't even but remember, but yeah. Schwartz had a panic attack at the end of the previous episode and just walked out in the middle of his bartending at gig pump. at Sir at, at pump. pump, one of those places. And it's just kind of wham, you know, he ran away, and he's scared because Lisa's pissed. So he's been bugging Lisa for a job for a long time. Is that the story? Yeah, I guess because Katie and Schwartz are together, and... Katie thinks that Schwartz needs to get a real job and start supporting him. He's a model, I guess, on the side, but he has... Yeah, I'm going to get a real job as a bartender at Pump. Yeah, that's, that, that's what most people do in the real world as well. Exactly. And Schwartz is all flipping out about it. And then when he walked out, Jax got his... He was getting his nose job, and Jax was like, dude, you walked out of a bartending job. Chill out. You didn't... Like, he didn't walk out of, like, Booz Allen Hamilton or, you know, one of these jobs. Like, <laughs> Well, they, but they act like he did, though. And, you know, she, Katie gave him crap... I guess bartended once and I didn't know it. I worked the POS system and you, know, you get a few people in and you get a little overwhelmed. I didn't walk out. Obviously I made it, I made it work, but the like Katie was basically crapping on him as a human being because he walked out of there and freaked out rather than maybe being like a girlfriend and saying, you know, what's wrong? Like, why did this happen? Let me try to be empathetic towards you. She basically was like, you embarrassed me 
And I don't even think you can get married now because if you walked out on a bartending job, how could you possibly commit to marriage? I'm like, kind of stretching things a little bit, Well, she thinks he has like no work ethic, right? So if he can't do a bartending job, then he can't take care of her and support her and support the family. But in turn, uh, I don't think bartending's for everyone. I think it's really overwhelming and crazy and not everyone can make great drinks and handle, you know, serving drinks to hundreds of drunk people all night. So I'll give him credit. I probably, if I felt that way, I probably would have walked out too. So Jack's got his nose finally done t- this week. Did they, <laughs> did you notice a difference? I mean, did they actually show him afterwards with the interviews before or after? Because I didn't notice that I wasn't, you know, really looking that strong. Oh, no. The same as always. And, yeah, when they do those interviews, they're like, "Are they doing it before the fact?" Yeah, did he, was he talking about getting the nose job? But he couldn't because he was talking about what was happening after. He looked the same. I don't. No, get they'll it. probably they probably did a shot like straight on. But if you did, yeah. turn to the side, it looks like that bump's probably no longer there. And should we uh, a couple of things we need to address with Jack? So, like any real man, he and the two Toms went and got their eyebrows threaded before the nose job. And then Jax is a giant klepto, apparently. When Lisa came by to see how he how he was doing, he's like, oh, I got boxes of Sir candles and Sir utensils and glasses and crap. I was like, what the frick? Yeah, and then they showed his apartment and there was all this random stuff. Yeah, that was what, weird. What did Lisa say to him when, when she went to see how he was doing? Oh, darling, dogs, are you okay? Oh, my God. There was another thing that I was really, really questioning the entire time she was in his apartment. Yeah. Were those bicycles that were above his bed, were they real or were they fake? Oh, I didn't even notice. You didn't notice? I didn't notice. You kept pausing it like over and over because I couldn't tell if they were real or fake. Like, were they hanging or were they decals? Oh, I don't I don't know. I guess we'll just never know the answer to whether those bikes are real. I, I somehow live. I know. It's so interesting. And the whole thing was at the, was it OK Magazine party. Of course, all these idiots all go to the same party and they all hate each other. It's it's like Mean Girls, only they're all Mean Girls. Yeah. And I hate them all. Like They're, they're all just the worst people. Stasi went over and talked to Kristen and Sheena, even though she hates them both. And I, I, I'm going to say one thing about this. If Stasi can't be friends with at least one person, either Sheena or Kristen or one of them, they're not going to be able to have a show. Or Stassi's just not going to be able to be a part of it because she's becoming so irrelevant to the plot because she doesn't hang out with anyone and she doesn't hang out with, you know, the, the crew that, yeah. that the whole show centers around. So and where the heck's this guy? She's always talking about banging like he's never there. Isn't that weird that she's never hanging out with her boyfriend who she says she loves yeah. so much? Yeah, I mean, he's just it's not the, not a part of the show. So I think they need maybe, to get, he did, maybe he's actually smart. And was like, F it. I don't want to be on the stupid show anymore. Oh, of course, he was probably there. He just didn't want to be filmed. But at the same time, she's just not going to be a part of the next season. And they probably will have a next season. It shouldn't even include her at this point. What do you think? Yeah, you know, I mean, this is my first season, but I was, they built up the hype around Stassi and I just don't see it right now. I don't either. And how about that well, letter that James wrote Lisa? <laughs> it, it, it got him his job back. But what was his job before? Because he's well, bustling one night a week now. Yeah, is so that... that's weird because I think he was doing one night a week before. But it is funny, though, even Katie mentioned this, I think I think it was Katie, how James may have whined like a little like a little bee, but he got his job back where Schwartz is like, oh, well, lost my job. Here's my here's my uniform. See you later, Lisa. I just my think bad. he realized it wasn't for him. I don't think it had anything to do with like, oh, I'm going to have to go back to be a model. Oh, well, oh life me. is so <laughs> tough, darling. Finally, this is about this is over a week old, but they didn't have an episode this week. Homeland. Do you remember what happened? No. <laughs> well, they figured out that the ambassador's husband was the one who screwed with Carrie's medication. Oh, yeah. And they and interrogated him. And even, the yeah. Yeah, even his, even his, well, spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, they had this prisoner exchange. It was pretty tense. You didn't know what was going to happen. But in the end, they got Saul and uh, back, and they get the terrorists go free. And they're like, okay. And they're driving back, doing blah, blah, blah. When suddenly these just missiles that come out of nowhere and blow up all the, all the caravan. I think it was the two that got hit that weren't where Carrie and yeah, Saul were. I think in, they, right? those are, that's the one that didn't blow up. There was two that blew up and then one that just flipped or something, I think. So while that's going on, the, uh, yeah, the guy who's the ex uh, Senator, who's the head of the CIA is like, I'll get all the Marines out there. And it's that that's going on. They figure out, oh, crap, all the terrorists are coming in here and going to blow up this place. Like a Benghazi part two, basically. Oh, yeah. So that's not good. But I want to see some kick ass. So that's where they left it. Next week. Like the the terrorists were like charging un- from underneath the alleyway. Yeah, from where, 
Or Sandy used to get it in and out. What the hell was the ambassador's husband thinking when he told him Dude, the secret passage? Like, why would you do that? I don't even get that whole character is really just like a MacGuffin, which is basically it means that's what gets the plot going. He's yeah. just there to advance things because it, it, what he does really is makes no sense. Yeah, he has no incentive yeah. to do any of that. Why did he do it? I don't even remember why they ended up doing this to begin with. I have no idea. So next week, I think we're going to see Quinn versus terrorism. And I want this to end like how the uh, the Walking Dead things end, where you think it's going to be this huge thing. I want to see these guys walking down the hall and Quinn just unloads a machine gun and kills them all. That would be one awesome. Second. And he's like, democracy, bitch. <laughs> Drops the gun and walks out. That would be so awesome. But here's what's going to happen. I think the head of the CIA is going to get killed. And somehow it's going to lead to Saul getting that job again. Yeah. And well, Carrie's somehow going to save the day. Carrie will screw up, but they'll tell her she did a phenomenal job and save the day. It's the and same crap yada, yada, yada. over and over. I just wish they'd come know, with something new. The, the last two weeks, though, for me, have been the best homeland since season, the beginning of season two. So I'm excited to see where it's going. I was out a little bit, and now I'm back in. You know, we got rid of got rid of Ion and the banging, and now you're going to the shooting. That was the best the, part. I love that. What'd you do the entire episode? I don't know. Carrie just banged. Carrie banged, banged the, Ion uh, and, and, and yeah. never answered her phone. Then Ish hit the fan. So, all right. That's enough today for our first show back post-Thanksgiving. Do you have anything else to add? I just want to talk about Kendall Jenner for a second. Okay, go for it. Have you heard anything about what's going on with her recently? I, I've been out of the loop to a certain degree. I've been running around seeing people for the holidays. Uh, Tell me all about came, it on me. She made this video, I guess, for Dazed Magazine. And mm -hmm. you know that scene in Mean Girls where they had the burn book? Yeah. She pretty much did a burn book for herself. So she was like, <laughs> what? Kendall Jenner's you know, useless and doesn't contribute to society. Kendall, Kendall Jenner's a total itch. She never works for anything. You know, just like saying really nasty things about her. Which one is this? Is it the one that's she like 19 or something or 18? Yeah, she's like the model now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so basically she did a burn book to kind of mock everybody and what everybody says about her. And then also she's getting a lot of notoriety and just, you know, she's getting covers of magazines and runways. So she's kind of somebody to watch. But she's also somebody that you might get really sick of really fast. Well, and by what you mean, will she surpass her other sisters in being total d bags? Or, or what? <laughs> everything you just said is true. What does she contribute? Wow, you look pretty. Guess what? Lots of women look pretty out there, and that's about all you got. I love it. I love it. Yeah, that's pretty much why you would watch her. That or the se another sex tape. You know, it's Kardashian legacy. I'm waiting for another scandal. I'm holding out hope that. Uh, that she becomes a, f a speed skater or an Olympian or the hell her father was. Oh, yeah. He was. I'm only hoping she becomes like, an Olympian. Whatever. Did, like, a a the, decathlete. Yeah. The, the what? The triathlon cathlete? Are you I, just putting all the, the words together at this point? No, decathlete. It's when you do five. Decky. <laughs> I think he did three or something. Oh, whatever. Is she going to be more like him or is he going to be more like her? Because, you know, the, the talk is that he's becoming a woman. <laughs> so. <laughs> all right. We're leaving it on that. They can't can't get any better than that. Remember, go to our website at www.bringmeyourtorch.com or you can go to our Facebook and Twitter pages. Where may those be? www.twitter.com slash bringmeyourtorch without the H, like John without the H. <laughs> and facebook.com slash bringmeyourtorch. All day, baby. All day. All day, every day. What, what, what? And make sure to subscribe to us on iTunes. You can find us on Stitcher, on Blueberry, on all these things. Go to our website for all those links. And uh, until next time, just remember, you may have come here as a stranger, but you're leaving as a friend. We'll see you next time on Bring Me Your Torch. Bye.